Okay, let's talk about loops. Uh, so first I will talk a little bit about me and then I'll do an overview of uh, the loops lesson. So me, my name is Daniel Watson. Um, I can juggle five ball and I made a robot that is capable of recovering combinations from master combo locks. Um, so let's go look at those. So there's the robot and uh, it this part is a master combo lock and it's encased in this plastic right here. Uh, this spins the dial and then there's a little arm that does the shackle up and down after it dials in a new um, combination. And then here's that robot and here's a bunch of locks that it was able to recover the combination for. I did that for a school that I worked with, an elementary school. Um, and uh, I write code a lot. I also uh, recently wrote code to help me do my taxes. Um, this video is for people ages 5 to 13.86 billion years old. Um, but that's, uh, more importantly, it's, in, it's useful, this will be more useful if you have the ability to, you've already done editing Python code and then running the resulting edited code, and then more specifically, in Python, you've assigned values to variables, um, updated the value in the variable, uh, yeah, if you have some experience uh, with variables, that's important, and then lists. Um, so for example, this is a list literal, and uh, so we're going to be using that a little bit. Okay, with that out of the way, now on to the different concepts. Um, we're going to see some concrete examples of loops, then we'll talk about when you would use a loop, like uh, you have a problem in the real world and uh, one thing that you would do to solve it is part of solving it would be writing a for loop. Um, then we'll talk about if you're used to writing Python code and but you haven't written for loops, how you go about writing a for loop, like what are the mechanical steps. And then finally we will talk about what are common missteps for writing for loops. How do people uh, make mistakes when writing for loops? Okay, so here is a for loop. This for loop, uh, the for loop is actually just these two lines, uh, but we have the before and the after just to make it clearer which part is the for loop. And if I run this, uh, we'll see the output here. We get before, that's printed by this line, after, that's printed by this line, and then these three lines are printed by these two lines. There's three output lines, and there's the number three here, that's important. Uh, the output, the end of these three lines says 0, 1, and 2. That's also related to this 3 right here, and this i, and this i. Um, a for loop consists of a header line, so the line 26 right here, and a body. The header line has the word for, f-o-r, that's a keyword in Python, uh, and then for the type of loop that we're talking about, we're going to do an, uh, a single variable here, and then the, the word in, I-N, um, and it has to be exactly F-O-R and I-N, those are keywords. Then we have this expression here, range 3. Um, it could be a different expression, uh, and we're mostly going to use that, range 3. And then at the very end, this colon is the end of the header, then we have the body of the for loop. The body is everything that's indented more than the header, just after the header, until you have something that's indented the same as or less than the header, or you have the end of the file. Um, so that's all that stuff. Um, we talked about the this is printed three times. The value of i is 0, 1, and 2. Um, here is another for loop that has more stuff in the body of the for loop. So there's three lines in the body of this for loop. And so the thing that gets repeated in the output will also be three lines long. So this is three lines, and this is three lines, um, and those three lines are because of these three lines in the body. And it's repeated twice because we have the number two here, and then you have the word before, that makes that part of the output, and then we have the word print after here, that makes that part of the output. Um, okay, 
So moving on, here's another example of a for loop. This time it's in C++, uh, but you can see that the Python version looks, there's a lot of stuff in common, so we still have the word for, uh, we still have some way of indicating when there's the beginning and end of the for loop. Uh, we still have a variable that's used uh, that the value of the variable changes as the for loop progresses. Now that we've seen that, we will talk about uh, what are concrete, um, like when would you use a for loop? I used a for loop earlier today in helping uh, writing code for what happens when I press my uh, light button on the wall. Um, the button, it will decide to either turn off all the lights or turn on all the lights. And the way that it does that is by going through and checking every single light. And it says, are you on? What about you? What about you? Every single light, as soon as it finds a light that is on, then it knows the decision that it makes is to turn all the lights off. Um, otherwise, it turns all the lights on if it finds no light already on. So all the lights are off, then it turns them on. Um, so how to write a for loop. If you don't already know how to write a for loop, you would probably write code like this, where you have some code that's very, very similar, but only slightly different on some of the lines. If you have code like that, then you can make these lines, uh, you can rewrite it in this way, so let me run that. And you can see the output is before, 0, 1, 2, after. And then we have here, uh, the output of this is going to be the same, before, 0, 1, 2, after. Um, but I've added uh, this variable i, setting, setting it equal to 0. And then I have print i, then i is equal to 1, print i, i is equal to 2. Um, this is more code, but these lines, line 112, 114, and 116, are now identical to each other. They're literally, character for character, the exact same as each other. So what that means is, I can put it as the body of the for loop, and then I have this variable i, that is now the variable for my for loop, and I have these values 0, 1, and 2, and I can use that here as part of the values that I will take on as this gets executed. And as we can see, we get the same output again, before, 0, 1, 2, after. And then we can do one more step here, which is this kind of thing happens very often uh, in programming languages. So we have uh, integers starting at 0, going up to some number. Um, and what we can do, what a lot of languages do, is they have some shortcut for saying that. So in Python, we have range and then the number 3. So 3 means there will be three different numbers, um, and the last number will be one less than whatever this number is, and the first number will be 0. So the output of this will be exactly the same. So we have before, 0, 1, 2, after, and then here we have before, 0, 1, 2, after. Um, and then finally, we will talk about how uh, to mess up a for loop. So one thing that happens is students will accidentally, they will try to set the value of i as part of the body of the loop. Um, but if we do kind of the inverse, uh, where we take uh, this and we expand it and turn it into something that we would write without a for loop, that would look like this. So this line is from the head, um, and then this line is the body, and then this is also the body. So we have i set to 0, then we set i, uh, this is from the head, this is from the body, and then we print, and that would print a 0. Um, and then we set i to 1, and then we set it to 0, and then we'll print a 0. Let's try running this and show that the output is 0 three times in a row. And that might be confusing um, until you see this longer version where we set i to 0 just before printing. Um, and the reason we do that is because that's the expanded version of this i equals 0, the body right here getting repeated down here. Um, and it repeats 1, 2, 
three times because this number is three right here. And then uh, we can see that the output is the same. It's zero, zero, zero. Here's another common uh, mistake is to forget the colon at the end of the header line. So if I try to run this, what happens is we get a very helpful error message. Um, some languages don't do as good a job here. It expected a colon, and the place that it expected it is above this thing. This is supposed to be an arrow pointing up, and the place that it's pointing to is the absence of a colon. Um, so that's another thing that students will uh, mess up about for loops. And here is the same code as before. Um, so this code and this code are identical, except the this code down here has the colon. And if I run that, then I get the output 0, 1, 2 as expected. And that is for loops. Thank you very much.